What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. Today, I'm gonna tell you how you can align your flat burr grinder. Boom. So today, like I said, we're gonna look at aligning grinders with just a few simple tools, a pair of scissors, expo marker, permanent marker, Phillips head screwdriver, and some aluminum foil and obviously your grinder. Now, before we continue, I would like to ask if you've been enjoying my videos, if you're gonna use this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, there's still the hefty majority of you that watch my videos are not subscribed, not a huge deal. You know, just click that button if it's not a big deal for you. I would really appreciate it. Uh, anyway, let's continue with this video. Um, this is gonna really help you elevate your coffee game at home and thanks. So one of the biggest things that people neglect to do when they get flat burr grinders is to align them. Oh, most companies, unless you're buying the really expensive end game style grinders, are not gonna come aligned. In fact, there are varying tolerances that manufacturers have built in their grinders. So that means that some of them will have tighter tolerances, which means from the burr carrier to the chamber to the auger, etc., all have certain distances that they are created to be from each other. Obviously, the less tolerance, the more difficult it is. So the cheaper the machine, likely the bigger the tolerance is. But there is a way that you can tighten your alignment. Now, what do I mean by alignment? Let's go ahead and get into that. Actually, first things first, what do I mean by flat burr? Uh, some of you watching this may not even know that distinguishing uh, bit, so I want to ensure you do. When I say flat burr, I mean literally that, a burr set that is flat, okay? Now there are, if you have like a Brazza Encore or a Sete, or if you've seen the niche grinder or things like that, those are what are called conical burr grinders. So you have like a cone burr, and then you have a kind of a collar that rotates around it. So that's called a conical burr. These, however, are flat burrs, okay? So I don't really know of a way to align conical burrs, but for flat burrs, I'm gonna show you how to do this today. So before continuing, I do want to explain two different styles of misalignment. One of them is coplanar, and that is this. So what you want are two parallel burrs. Coplanar would mean that one is slightly askew, like so, okay? The other would be if it's off radially, so that means they should be lined up perfectly. That means, whoop, it's off like this. Now obviously these are huge, I'm showing you like massive things, they're never that big. It's normally just, like you can't even see it with your eye really. So there are two, essentially two main ways of misalignment. It, uh, for, for the radial, you know, what a lot of people try to do is feel with their hand as they're putting the burrs back in, you know, just trying to make sure that they're lined up from side to side. We're not gonna really get into that in this one. We're gonna talk about coplanar misalignment, which is those alignments, misalignments that are like this. Now, obviously, what's the issue with that? Well, think about it. As we're grinding coffee, we think we're at this grind size, right? But really, we're at this grind size. So where that hinge is in the middle, we're here instead of here. So what's gonna happen is grounds coming out of one side of those, that burr set are gonna be bigger. Burrs out of, uh, grounds out of the other are gonna be smaller. You're gonna produce a lot more fines. You're gonna produce a lot more boulders. You're gonna have a much more uneven particle distribution. So our idea here, what I'm gonna show you today is what's called a shim alignment. We're gonna use aluminum foil. We're gonna shim behind the burrs in order to make them more aligned. So take that crazy misalignment and make it more like so. So essentially what we're going to do, and all in a lot of these flat burr grinders that are vertically mounted, they're gonna look something like this. Obviously, not with thumb screws. I brought this one because it's easier to take apart. But I'm taking out these screws on the side. Then behind it, we've got the burr carrier. So I take that out. Oops, there's no burr because I've already taken them out. So we have the burr carrier. Then you have the spring around the auger, which is what gives us the tension to change our grind size. And then you have the back burr, which is normally on this plate right here. Okay, so we have the auger here, which is the thing that spins. In fact, I can show you. This is dangerous. There's like no safety on these uh, grinders. So I can show you how that, that auger spins. So just for people who don't know what's going on, that burr will sit back here. And then when you turn the auger to spin it, it's connected to this burr and that's how you're making your ground coffee. And it drops straight down. Now there are obviously grinders like the Bratz Avario that are horizontally set. Same process on shimming. We're just gonna shove aluminum foil behind uh, and, and go, go for it like that. Now the way I like to do it, is obviously you wanna be safe. So the first thing we're going to do is unplug our grinder. All right, unplugged. Now what I like to do is take it, put it on its back, all right? So now what we're going to do, 
is we're gonna take, we're gonna do the initial marker test, okay? This is how we're gonna see how aligned or misaligned our grinder is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap these together and uh, it's gonna be all reassembled. And, and now we have the burrs reinstalled. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my trusty Expo marker, retake. Okay, one more time. I promise I'm good at catching stuff. I'm gonna take my trusty Expo marker and then here's what I'm gonna do. On the edge of these burrs, what you're gonna see is a flat edge at the very tip. So when you saw me put them together, they were sandwiched together to where you couldn't see anything. This is a flat edge. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take my Expo marker and just on the outer burr carrier, we're gonna do one at a time, on just this outer burr carrier, I'm going to take my marker, I'm just going to draw on the flat edge, okay? Now, why am I doing this? The reason I'm doing this, why, the reason I'm drawing on this flat edge is because that flat edge is gonna to touch the flat edge of the other burr, okay? So what I'm going to test is where it's touching this burr. So whenever it's down, if it were completely flush, right when I touched the burrs at the zero point, right when I touched, all of the markers should be wiped off if they are perfectly aligned. But what's gonna happen is likely this burr is just slightly askew, this burr itself, okay? because the burr carrier is probably just a little off. And so if that's the case, then what's gonna happen is maybe one side will be wiped off or one segment will be wiped off. And then the, what we're going to do in order to make sure that it's aligned is we're gonna take a little bit of aluminum foil and we're gonna poke it behind the burr wherever the uh, marker has not been wiped off, okay? So we're taking that, put the marker around it, and we're gonna do our first marker test. Okay, so I'm just gonna replace it. Make sure you have your spring in there, I almost forgot. Make sure you have your spring, that's very important, obviously. Then you're gonna push that in. We're gonna replace everything. All right, so now we're gonna do the test. Make sure you're not at zero to start. Then we're gonna turn it on. All right, and I'm gonna slowly go down till the burrs start to chirp. You ready? Let's listen for it. Uh-oh. There it is. You hear that? You could tell how misaligned that was. You could hear it going wow, 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 wow. The chirping was way off, meaning these burrs are hella misaligned. Okay, so I'm gonna unplug it again, and then we're gonna take this back apart, and we're gonna check where that marking, that stripe is, and we're back. All right, so let's take a look at this, and look real close. Can you see that dry erase? Okay, so you see right, where'd it go? Right here, it's wiped off, you see that? Just this section though, all of this still has its dry erase marker. See that? So this is pretty horribly misaligned. That means just this part touched, which means if we had it like so, if we had it like this, this is the part that touched, that means this burr carrier has it just tilted like so. So as it's spinning, it, this is the only side that's hitting. Okay, so as it's spinning, zoop, zoop, zoop. So as you see, this side is wiped off, which means as it was down here, the bird hair was just off, and so it's kind of following that same path. So this is the only part that is hitting. So what we need to do in order to compensate is we need to shove some shims right underneath the burr carrier. Now, why aluminum foil? Well, because aluminum foil, this is gonna be shocking to you, but it's the most consistent household thing you can find as far as the thickness. I believe it's, I'll probably be, uh, I'm probably wrong here, but it's, I believe it's six microns thick. Um, six microns thick. So, um, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a piece of aluminum foil. I mean, you don't have to go this big. In fact, I'm not going to. I'm gonna just cut a little bit off. I'm gonna take off some aluminum foil. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut here. Boop. I'm gonna make a little piece like so. I'm gonna make a couple of pieces like this. So I'm gonna just cut, cut, cut. So as you see what I'm doing, I'll show you the size in a second. I'm just making myself a lot of little shims. Okay, so I'm making my shims this size. Okay, that way I can fold it in two and now I've got 12 microns thick. Okay, and there we have just a simple little shim. Now that we've got those shims ready, take a permanent marker, okay? Take the lid off. Now what I'm gonna do is just to be sure we always know how to get back to where we were, is I'm gonna mark on the burr and the burr carrier so I know where to always align it, okay? This is where it's always gonna be. So whenever I make shims and I take things apart, I know how to put it back on. Cause also the bird could be off, anything could be off. So what we wanna do is since we're 
uh, aligning based off of this format, we're going to use a permanent marker to ensure we know how to get back to where we're going. Then what else you can, what you can also do is wherever it's wiped off, you can mark the opposite side to help you know where to shim. I'm, I, I'm gonna keep it with the markings on there and I'm gonna just barely lift this up. So I'm gonna just barely unscrew it. Barely unscrew. What I'm gonna do is on the opposite side, I'm gonna lift up this burr and I'm gonna take two shims. Since it was such a small spot that was hit, I'm gonna do it here. I'll show you here in a second. I'll point to where I did it and why. I'm gonna take another shim. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna shove it right there, okay. So now we've got shims on both sides. I'm gonna push it back down, hold it tight. And this is where I'm talking about radial alignment. You wanna make sure you're feeling and squeezing the sides to make sure that the burr is up against the burr carrier as evenly as possible on all sides. So if you feel this side is, is sloping over more, make sure you pop it back with a screwdriver or something once it's getting tight. You wanna make sure that all sides are as equal as possible. Now what you're gonna do, or what I did, is so here's where the marker rubbed off. So I put a shim here and a shim here to lift up this whole side. So hopefully we can get a full wipe on our next attempt, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wipe all this marker off. I'm gonna redraw a circle and we're gonna do the marker test again. All right, so we've got it up. I plugged it back in, because remember, keep it unplugged whenever you're playing inside of it, and then I'm gonna click it on. All right, now let's make it touch. All right, we're gonna go until it just barely touches, so listen for it. There it went. Okay, you just want to barely touch. If you, if you go hard past touch point, it's gonna wipe everything off. You're gonna have a false wipe. So you want to make sure that you just barely touch those burrs for just a second, especially on something that spins around 2,000, 2,500 RPM. You just barely let it touch, okay? If you go too tight or you let it spin too much, it can give you a false reading. So unplug and check the wipe once more. And this never happens. My first try, I got it right. So let's take a look at this. So really, really nice, really nice marking here. Can you see that pretty well? Oh yeah. So you see, okay, so there's a little marker on the front of the edges of this teeth here, but if you see, the outside of it is wiped clean, okay? So it's just a little bit on the inside, but I'm calling that a full wipe. That's a freaking delicious wipe right there. I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm sure memes will be made for me saying delicious wipe, but um, that's a great wipe, okay? So uh, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm keeping that. I'm not going to move it. Uh, now, now the next thing you would do, I'm not going to do it because you understand, but the next thing you would do is now that we have this one aligned and good to go, we would do it to the stationary burr as well. And we'd figure out where the alignment is wrong there. And we'd start to throw shims in until you found where it was for a flint clean wipe on both burrs. This is, um, uh, the, the easiest way to do it. It's also the most labor intensive because you have to, that, I mean, like I said, this is probably the first time that's ever worked first try. I'm very stoked about that. Um, but yes, try this out. Let me know your results. You can do it on any flat burr grinder. Just shim it up, good to go. Um, yeah, try that out. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, yeah, join my Patreon. It's in the caption below. That helps me get things like this. I'm actually gonna be giving this grinder away to someone in my Patreon, as well as all the grinders in my previous video linked right here, which is about budget grinders. Everything that I buy with Patreon funds, I give right back to Patreon. So consider hopping in there, that would be fantastic. Um, other than that, thank you, like, subscribe, do the stuff, share with your friends, whatever it is, help align your friends' grinders. Uh, you're gonna hate me for this, but you're also gonna love me because I do think you'll probably notice a difference on sweetness and clarity. Anyway, that's my time for today. Thank you very much, hope you enjoyed, and cheers.